it's Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls and today I'm doing two tags. Within a couple days of each other I was actually tagged to do two different fall tags and one of them was the Autumn Booktube tag which was actually created by Erin at In Bed With Books so I'll link her original video in the description below but I also was tagged to do the Finally Fall book tag from Rissy over at Rissy JC so I'm going to have both of their videos in the description below so y'all can check them out and I'm just going to answer some from both of them because fall is not really my personal favorite season but these are some pretty good questions that I wanted to answer. So I don't have an answer for all of these questions for both of these tags so I'm just going to do some here and some there but so if I skip a number <laughs> that's why <laughs> okay so starting with the finally fall book tag which Rissy tagged me to do the first question is in fall the air is crisp and clear and name a book with a vivid setting and I honest to goodness could not think of one like sure I've read a ton of books but a vivid setting felt really bad that I couldn't come up with one for this. Maybe one day I'll think of it and then I'm going to comment down below on this video and say, I got it, it was this one. But right now, yeah, I, I honestly can't think of one. Question number two, nature is beautiful, but also dying. Name a book beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. And for this one, I'm going to go with Gathering Shadows by Nancy Mel. I recently read this one a couple months ago, and it's basically all about our main girl, whose brother was abducted when he was little, so this is basically the loss and grief part of this question. I have a really hard time calling a book beautifully written, so I don't know if I would call this book that, but it was a good written book, and I did enjoy it. And I plan to pick up book two and three. Okay, so I'm skipping number three and going to question number four. In order to keep warm, it's good to spend time with people we love. Name a fictional family slash household slash friend group that you'd like to be a part of. So I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in another video, which I'm not sure which one. I'm normally pretty good with like, oh, it was in this video. I don't know which video it was. But I'm going to go with Kristen McGee's Contemporary Trilogy. I'm going to go with these three girls from First Date Starring Me and Right Where I Belong because this was such a good series and these girls are awesome. And, oh, they would just be so much fun to just hang out with. If you've read the series, you've got to agree with me if you like the series. But I think it would be really fun just to hang out with them and be friends with them. Okay, so number five is kind of a challenge. And that's colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. And I'm just going to be honest with y'all right here. I'm from Texas. It's 90 degrees outside. I'm wearing long sleeves. See what I do for y'all? Okay, but, okay, let's see if I can do this. Um... Okay, so let's see. I want to organize these by color. Wind Calls the Heart by Jeanette Oak. Karen Barnett's The Road to Paradise. Taking Tuscany by Renee Riva. 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 Riva? Is that right? I think, maybe. Annie's Stories by Cindy Thompson. Riley May and the Soul Fire Safari by Jill Osborne. Wait, wait, there Ah! How can I put Chasing Jupiter by Rachel Coker. An Ocean Away by Lisa Harris. Flirtation Walk by Surrey Mitchell, which definitely has a fall feel cover. And then When Comes the Spring by Jeanette Oak. We're going to do another Jeanette Oak. There we go. Okay, they're kind of more orangey than folly, but that's not too bad. I didn't realize I had so many orange books. Hmm. Very pretty. Question number eight. The days are getting colder. Name a short, heartwarming read that could warm up anybody's cold and rainy day. And I'm going to say any Janice Thompson book. Even though I read those during the summer and that's kind of the majority of the season of the year for Texas. We don't get cold until, well my part of Texas doesn't get cold till January, February. So yeah, I'm still in shorts y'all. I'm wearing a long sleeve top, but I have shorts on. <laughs> don't let me fool y'all. But yes, for this question I'm going to go with Janice Thompson. She works for every answer. And then question number 10, which I thought was a really fun one. Fall is a perfect time for a cozy reading night. Share your favorite cozy reading accessory. And while I don't really have like an accessory per se, I do love fuzzy blankets. I have one from Vera Bradley in the Cherry Blossom pattern. And oh, I love it so much. It's so soft and cozy and warm. And then with a cup of tea, you really can't go wrong. 
Okay, so those are my answers to some of the questions of the Finally Fall book tag, which Rissy tagged me to do. Again, her video will be in the description below, so y'all can check it out. And now for the Autumn Booktube tag, which was created by Erin of In Bed With Books, and she tagged me to do this one, and these are some fun questions, so let's get started. Question number one, is there a genre you find yourself drawn to in the fall season? And again, we don't really have fall here in my part of Texas, but as I hear about fall, it sounds like a lovely concept, uh, I would probably be more towards the contemporaries or the cozy mysteries. I read a lot of cozy mysteries when it's kind of chilly outside. Well, chilly for uh, chilly for uh, chilly for me is under 71. Like I'm not I'm not going to lie y'all. I don't like anything under 71. So, yeah, I don't always do well in weather. Man, though, Angela of Coffee and Chapters was saying she's had snow. What? What? That does that does not work in my head at all, y'all. Snow? Snow? I, I, yeah, I can count on one hand the times I've seen snow, and three of them were out of state, so there's that. Okay, so back on track. Question number two. What are three books you are most looking forward to reading this season? And honestly, there's not really anything strangely specific besides uh, Vanishing Point by Lisa Harris. This book is coming out in November. I have an arc, and I, I'm so nervous, but I'm so excited. I'm so, so nervous, but I'm so excited. So we're finally going to find out what happened to Nikki Boyd's sister, and oh my goodness, yeah, nervous, and I know I'm gonna have, I can't read this one at night, like, I'm not even, like, easily scared, but just for the, oh gosh, I just saw the first words, no, no, don't look, Lindsay, don't look, but then also for, like, the other two, I just really want to work on my TBR, I did my TBR challenge, I announced that, I think, in, was it September's monthly wrap-up video, and so I definitely want to work more on my TBR. Question number three, what is your favorite tea or hot drink for fall reading seasons? I'm definitely a tea person, I've actually never tasted coffee before, ever. I've lived 18 years and I've never tasted coffee. Um, so yes, definitely tea, I really love the Tea Forte brand. I'm not gonna lie y'all, they are not cheap, but there's a reason because when you taste it, it is it is like smooth. Like I, I never thought tea could be this smooth, but it is so smooth. And it's so good and oh, oh my goodness. My mom and sister are obsessed with pumpkins, everything. So they got the pumpkin spice version. Meanwhile, I'm over here with my African solstice and oh, it's so good, it's so good. Yeah. So yes, I love, I love tea for taste tea. So I'm a tea person, but mostly a tea forte person. And their packaging is so cute. I'll insert pictures of it all right here. And it's so cute and yummy and oh, so yummy. So like I've kind of hinted, I'm really not a fall person. This is not my favorite season. Uh, it's probably my second to least favorite season. I feel like people are gonna comment and unsubscribe and stuff for saying this. But I just, I don't wear fall colors and I get so hot so easily. So I don't really wear long sleeves. I think I own five long sleeve t-shirts. And I'm, I don't like pumpkin anything, even the legit pumpkin. It's not my thing. So I don't really buy into all the hype about pumpkin spice, whatever. But my mom and sister definitely do, especially my sister. So I mean, I know about it all. But, so that's why I'm kind of skipping a couple of these more fall scent and fall kind of questions. But if you like fall, and you are a fall person who lives on pumpkin spice, then please do answer this. I'd love to see your answers. So question number six, what is your favorite old movie from the 1960s or before? And as soon as I saw Erin say this question, I'm like, oh, How to Steal a Million. And then she said that one, so I'm like, oh yes, I definitely love How to Steal a Million, but starring Audrey Hepburn. But then I also love Please Don't Eat the Daisies, starring Doris Day. But yes, I definitely like How to Steal a Million, or Please Don't Eat the Daisies. Um, How to Steal a Million, I first saw while I was actually on the plane to China, and then my sister's a huge Audrey Hepburn fan, so when I came home, I'm like, have you ever seen this? And she said no, so we watched it together, and then my mom watched it with us, so I've seen it four to five times now in the last year, which is pretty good because we don't really watch movies that often. And then Please Don't Eat the Daisies starring Doris Day is such a classic. Number seven, what are you currently watching online? So I am assuming this means like TV show kind of wise, and I don't really watch too many things without subtitles. 
I really enjoy a lot of different K-dramas, but I'm actually watching my all-time favorite one again, which is titled Lovely Love Lie. It, I, this is like my third or fourth time watching it, but this time I'm watching it without the subtitles so I can work on my listening and trying to recognize different things they say for learning Korean because I'm working on it and I'm really really enjoying it but I just I need to be able to listen more so I'm watching that one without the subtitles and it's really great because I love I love that drama so much question number eight is what are you currently reading right now I'm actually not currently reading anything right at this moment besides like a Mandy collection which I'm in between books so that doesn't really count in my opinion I normally start reading books late at night or in the late afternoon not at the time I'm filming this, so when I get this question, I'm like, I'm not reading anything, and that makes me sound really un-booktuber-ish. Question number 12, what is your favorite fa all fashion trend? Like I just said a bit ago, I can't really wear fall colors with my uh, color scheme. I'm a cool, my mom and sister are warm, so this is their time to thrive. But I'm like, spring, spring, spring's coming soon, right? So I'm definitely not really into the color scheme of fall. I can admit it's pretty, just not on me. Jeffrey, I look yak in yellow. If y'all can name that movie, please comment it down below and I'm going to be so proud. So proud. I do have to say though, I like infinity scarves and heeled ankle boots. Look how cute these are, aren't they cute? So yes, definitely with the heels though. I'm definitely a heel person. And then number 13 is share one personal goal for the season and how you plan to achieve it. The only thing that really came to my mind was work on that TBR. Oh y'all, it's staring right at me. So yes, I definitely need to work on it. I'm about 30 books off of it, but unfortunately I've added about five more, so that kind of that kind of messes it up. But I definitely want to work on that. I want to try to get at least 50 books off of it. 50 to 70 books off of it by the end of the year. I think I can do that. It sounds like a reasonable goal because sometimes that also counts books I've been sent to review. I'm trying to get it all together. And y'all, yeah, there's a lot of books. Like, there's a few holes. I'm not going to show y'all because my desk is right next to it and it's a wreck. But it's, it, there's a few holes and it's very encouraging to see. So yes, those were my answers to the Finally Fall book tag and the Autumn booktube tag, which were so much fun to both do. I definitely recommend if you are a huge fall person to do them both. I'm not, but I still enjoy doing this tag, both of these tags. Thank you again so much, Rissy and Erin, for tagging me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're not so disappointed, the fact that I'm not a fall person. But I definitely did enjoy doing this. I'd love to know your answers to some of these questions in the comments below. And if you can guess that movie quote, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gonna send y'all a virtual hug because I'm really impressed. Hint, it's not either of the two movies I mentioned though today, so. It would have been mentioned, but it misses the 1960. It was posted in 1965, so there's a hint. Good luck. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls at blogspot.com where I post a new review every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I have a new video on this channel every Thursday and I'm on Instagram every other day. Bye y'all!